Okay, well, glad to see that, um, you know, a free of uh, the game freezing like that, stopping the stream. Oh my god, I seriously need to get a capture a capture card. I know, but that's really unfair. So, um, TV Blake, whenever you come back in, then uh, I'll I'm ready to go. But this is this is bullshit. I mean, this game literally makes no sense. Um, but maybe this is a good thing because, you know, now uh, I never won a game, so nobody can ever wonder what what happens. So. Although I just said exactly what happened. So I think what I'm going to do is if I manage to continue the stream, it, everything works fine, and I um, and I managed to get a couple wins, then this part alone will be the only part that I upload. Not the first part because nothing happened in that stream. I mean... Put it simply, or, or put it simply, I lost both of my games in the event, and I was losing to TV Blake in the fifth inning when the game froze. I, I'm sorry, guys. I don't. Uh, I never had this problem with MLB The Show 18, or not 18, but uh, 20. When I streamed it last year, I was not having these problems. All of a sudden. MLB The Show 21, I'm having these problems. I don't get it. I don't get it. So I, I'm going to go back into the event. Uh, we're going to try it again. Quickly getting lit the fuck up. Um, Lefty Grove could be in for Bob Feller. Bob Gibson. Uh, you know what? I'm tempted to give the Alcantara a shot here. And then Saber Aiken could be in for... Um, oh, excuse me. Could be in for uh, whatever. Whoever I replaced. I, I, I'm kind of losing my trail thought here. Where, uh, where Nathan? There he is. Uh, get Dennis Eckersley out. What? Carter and Pudge? No, 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 no. All right. Uh, first base. Let's try Ortiz again, because that's the closest that I am to... Although Santana was good. Um, maybe we'll have Santana on the bench. Or a Polanco, he could be at second, or he should be at second. I know I would... I should probably consider Jackie, but I, I'm working on Jackie offline. And then give me Troy at third. Jimmy Rollins at short. Left field, JD. Center, mantle, right. Uh, where is he? Tau. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, let's let's do this again. Let's try to get some wins here. Sorry, I'm trying to find the stadium. There it is, Barnes Canyon Ballpark. Hmm. I 
have like three switch hitters to start it off. Jesus. Oh! Oh, God. He's got three. Super Fractured, Waddy Guerrero, Super Fractured, Hank Aaron, and Super Fractured, frickin' Chipper Jones. Fuck me. Yeah. All right, obviously I'm going to, uh, well, first I'm going to request a friendly. He's probably not going to give it to me. I didn't think so. So I'm just going to try and, I, I'm not even going to give him anything to hit. If he can hit something, I mean, good for him, but otherwise he's not getting a single thing from me. And I'm not throwing this stuff just to be like a dick or whatever. I just don't want to go up against these super fractured players. I'm, I'm pretty sure he also has 99 Sprout in here. Yeah, he's got 99 Sprout. You think I want to go up against that shit? No. Somehow Trout only just lines out, but still. Uh-oh. Are we in a freeze-off? God damn it. Okay, so it started with my uh, with my game freezing on me. Now we're in a freeze-off? Ah, damn. Oh, there we go. Okay, my opponent... My opponent quit. So, thank you to my opponent. I hate to pick up a win that way, but there we go. There goes my, here's my stream. 11 wins. 10 more for Machado, and 14 more for Trey. Dave Parker, I really don't give a shit about. Sorry, Dave. Do it. All right, this guy's, he's got pretty, oh, he's got 90, a super fractured uh, Roberto Clemente. So that's going to be tough. Let's see. Gleaming Get 072, best of luck. I mean, he's got a pretty good ranked season's record. Probably beat the program at least once, or beat the or got night at thirty wins. Uh, in the World Series, in the ranked seasons program, at least once.
Okay, we'll throw one inside, see what happens. Oh, up and in, didn't mean to do up and in. Let's go. Keeping this guy so far to... to nothing. That's a good sign. Ooh, he's really, he's really hit with, well, with uh, Babe Ruth here. Just something to be careful of. down yeah I've always I, I've actually been uh, always always liked uh, Saber Haken I, I just like his wind up and everything it's nice quick easy can time it really well so that's why I like Saber Haken Uh, let's see. I think we're gonna get Rob Nen up in warming. My game froze, uh, TV boy. I'm sorry about that. If you want, we can finish up the, the game and I'll let you score the one run. Because you were ahead of me, so... Yeah, no problem, Pitcher. I I had my own problems. That wasn't on you. A three in it? Yeah, sure. I do feel bad about about what happened. So, this is the, this is the way it'll go, though, TV Blake. We'll, um... I, I will let you score a run in the first inning. All right, if we're going to do a three-inning game... You're gonna get that one run because you were you were ahead of me when my game froze, and that's on me. No, no, that's not fair to you. So you're gonna get the one run, and then whatever happens after that, that's completely on us. But. Well, because I got into a freeze off with my first opponent, that's that's why I got the one win because I wasn't quitting my I, I wasn't quitting my stream. God damn it! Yeah, but it's not a way that I want to earn it. I, I understand that. I, I'm not saying that I, I, I rejected the win. I'm saying that, you know, that win was really... It was because of a glitch. You know, a glitch that shouldn't even be happening in this game. That's the sad part. We are in December at this point. We are in December. This game has been out since April. So you're telling me that for eight months we could not fix this program, this problem? And you know what's even sadder? Is that some people really get screwed online by these free thoughts. I mean, I was just in my, I was just in day and night uh, stream yesterday. And that guy had a freaking freeze off when he, when he was about to go 12 and up, or 10 and up, I'm sorry, 10 and up, dude had a freaking freeze off, and he was winning, 2 to nothing, he deserved the win, I don't know what happened, I hope that he did eventually get the win, but I mean, this is ridiculous, it's stuff like that, it's stupid crap like that, that makes this game not fun, 
the first base of the other face. Oh my god, I left that hanging. I'm sorry to go on a rant with this game, but it's... That's a foul ball! How is that not a foul ball? Off PCI hit. Yep, makes sense. And this is Super Fractor Roberto. Save. Of course he is. But you know what? I'd rather have my relief pitchers lose it than my starting pitchers. Because my relief pitchers, it's like, whatever. Starting pitchers, you know, they, they start the game for me. Unless they really deserve it, like if you, like with, um, like with, uh, what's his name? The pitcher that I used against, um, in my first game of the night, I, he got, uh, uh, Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee got absolutely smacked. Now, absolutely smacked. He deserved the loss in that situation, but I'm saying... If it's a 0-0 zero, zero, uh, score, I'm clearly not going to give the loss to my to my starting pitcher. I'd rather give it to my relief pitcher. So once again, I'm too early on the slurve. And too late on the fastball. I'm going to try. I'm not guaranteeing ever anything. Well, it's not a bomb, but it is an extra base hit. So, I hope. Maybe. Oh, it's going to be close. Thank you, Mike Piazza. Holy shit. Mm. Should just let that one go. I know it. There we go. Finally, let let a pitch go. Actually, I should get I should get a pitcher up and warming. Um. Come on, JD. Whoa, did you see that? That guy glitched. Oh, thank God that went foul. I can tell you Polanco will be on the move. Okay. Alright. I was about to take out um, 
Then anyway, so. He's gonna throw in Class A against me. I'll take it! Let's go! And we're gonna get two runs out of this! That's what I'm talking about! Danny Santana on a bullshit, no PCI hit. And I will take that. Thank you very much. And we're just gonna add on to it. Look at a two run game. Oh, good pitch. Good pitch. Mm, should have let it go. Uh-oh. Uh, maybe that'll be enough. Beat it. Let's go! We scored a run! Holy shit, thank God for, Mickey, uh, for Jimmy Rollins. Uh... 91 speed. Apparently that was enough. Holy shit. Let's go. Let's bring in the Sandman. Now, okay, I thought he would try the butt thing again, but he didn't. Strike three. Sit down. Nice. Let's go. Two outs. Ah, oh, this is such a confidence booster. Assuming I can get the final out here. If I can't, then you got a bit of a problem. Let's go. GG's to my opponent. I will take that. Thank you very much. Now I'm actually kind of glad he didn't, uh, he didn't accept the friendly. <laughs> All right, let's make it 12 now. 12 wins, I'll take it. Yep, absolutely, Blake. Absolutely. Ooh, got some headliner packs. Unfortunately, that's probably as good as it's going to get for me for tonight. Hold on, let me do this real quick, and then we'll just got to see if I get anything. I don't think I will, but... Why not? Not like I'm looking for any specific cards either. Like, I have all, I, I have pretty much the cards that I want. Ooh, that was three silvers in that one. All right, let's do this, uh, TV Blake. But that was, that's exactly the win that I wanted, pitcher. You know? Albeit, it came off of some bullshit hits, like that Danny Santana 
It should not have been one. It really shouldn't have. But MLB The Show Logic for you, so I'm sorry to my opponent. All right, playing at Ship It. All right, let's settle this, Blake. Although I think it was pretty much settled by the time that um, the fifth, uh, by the time my screen crashed. Well, let's really settle this. Blake, you didn't even have to have me give you the run. You got it right back anyway. That Rosario card is beast. Should have known better than to even try to pitch at it like that. I just wish this Pearson card had more pitches than what he currently has. Now, did you pull a uh, live series trout, or did you end up buying him on the auction block? Oh, shit. You bought him for 60k? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, he was, oh my god, throughout the year, he was hard, hard to come by. He was like over 500,000 for a, a good portion of MLB The Show 21. My god, it was so hard to get him. I don't even know how people managed to, um, yeah, that's, that's what happens. With all those headliner packs and everything... Yeah, that's what happens. Uh, you know. Oh, Piazza yeah, getting there. Batting second, the center field, number thirty-one. So, yeah. He can go down in price real quick. 
which is why now would be a good time to go ahead and start completing those collections if you haven't done so. Just be ready to pay up for a lot of bronzes and, and commons. Oh my gosh. Damn me. Yeah, get Pearson the hell out of there. He obviously did not come to play today. Strike three, sit down. But believe me, next year when MLB the show uh, 20... 22 comes out, you can bet that DeGrom, I'm sure Scherzer, uh, Trout, Acuna, Cole, all the guys that were pretty much 90s and hard to come by this year, they'll be hard to come by next year as well. I'm willing to bet it. I just wish that I had pulled uh, Trout this year. Because I ended up having to buy him myself, you know, in order to get the Chipper Jones collection done. He was literally the only player that I was missing. And with all these roster updates that they kept doing, it was just, it was getting too risky the longer to put it off. Because other cards like that Jonathan Diaz card was eventually becoming very hard to come by. I'm just saying that I'm glad I finished up Chipper when I did because otherwise it'd be a little a little difficult to be doing him right now. Uh... <sighs> oh, that had the distance. I tell you what about this about this Aaron Judge card, this 98 overall from the All Star programs. Let me tell you, he may have a small PCI, but when um, but when you get when you locate it and you make contact with it, he's hitting it a mile away. It's just that's the tough part is. Trying to spot this PCI on pitches like that that are that are um, that are just too fast. Yeah. 
Come on, drop, drop, drop. No way that's dropping. Yeah, no worries. We're not even keeping him in. We're bringing in Andrew Miller. Oh, shit! Strike three. Sit down. The first baseman, number thirty five, Cody. You know, at some point, I'm expecting MLB the show to have their forever event, which basically you can grind out. Jokes how I did, uh, how did I go lefty lefty? It happens, man. You pulled it. You pulled it. And that was a good, good pitch to pull. You had it right. You had it right. It was. You know, that's on me for even giving you anything to hit with Rosario. I should have known better. The center fielder, number 27, Mike Trout. And I just like I should have known better than to challenge Trump. Or I'm sorry, Trout. I am so sorry. Yeah, what you'll find in this game a lot, Blake, is that you're going to get some pr some pretty questionable home runs. Like, you know, like that one, yeah, the PCI, it, the PCI was somewhat on it, but if you had squared it up, you would have, um, that in all likelihood could have been a... Uh, in all likelihood, that probably would have been a flyout or a foul ball. This game really rewards early swings a lot. D. Lovey, what's up? All right, I seriously need to get some offense here. Because now I'm down five nothing. Just came from Curdy uh, Curdy B stream. Did he win that face off or that freeze off or no? Did he have to quit out of that? Because I was actually just talking about that. Because I ended up in a free salt myself, and my opponent quit, so that's how I got one of my event wins. But did he did he go 12 and 0? Ah, shit. I'm sorry to hear that. That's such bullshit. Like. He was about to go 12 and 0. I swear to God, if that kid's record was like 10 and 1 or whatever, Curdy B has every right to be upset about that. He has every right. He could have been flawless. He should have been flawless. And that's not fair that he got screwed out of being 10 and 0. 
such bullshit, man. These freeze-offs, games crashing, people cheesing, bunch cheesing, and all this shit. Like, people find ways to cheat the game, and it doesn't make it fun for the rest of us. No, I, I totally agree. I'd be absolutely furious. I'm, hell, I'm furious for Curdy B. I'm furious for him because that bullshit shouldn't even be happening. I just hate it for him. I really do. If I, if he really deserved that win. He, he was up 2 nothing. He was up 2 nothing against that guy. How fuck how how petty do you have to be to be in a freeze off for a guy for over 12 hours? They likely won't. They likely won't be. Not unless the entire community just, just like, bands together and, and tells SDS that they need to fix this. I'm not, I, I don't know if it's like a crossplay issue or if it's like, um, or if it's some kind of server issue or whatever, but they really do need to fix it. I'm just very doubtful they will. Because there's a lot of glitchiness that they... That they do. Stop taking me, no hitter. Sorry. About to tear... Yeah, I know. No, I have cross-play off and I was in a, in a freeze-off today. Okay, so it's not a cross-play issue. It's just... It's stupid bullshit. People just being petty and taking advantage of the game just so they can save face. Nice, Bray. Good job. And, uh, GG's, uh, Blake. See, I didn't even have to give you the run because you did it anyway. Okay, I'm just gonna buy a quick, a quick pack here. Real quick. Oh, finally. Got the finest first. I actually pulled this before over the weekend, so I'm hoping I can either get uh, Bueller or Morton. Uh, they're they're more common with crossplay on. I would I I would I, I could see that. Yeah, I never thought crossplay would be such an issue. Honestly, all right. Let's make him six nine ninety nine. Ah, they gave me bullshit. Five ninety nine. Okay, okay. Ooh, yes. Six seven seven five. All right, come on, give me that. Give me that rare round. Well, to be fair, I mean, this was the first time they were doing this. This was. The first time that MLB the show even even popped up on Xbox, so I think they were just excited about this, about the prospect of being of it being released on. You're saving up fifteen hundred to play me. All right, sounds good, man. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, so I I, I certainly do hope. That they take these lessons and um, and apply it to next year, but knowing that SCS is still going to make a shit ton of money, even if they don't make any improvements to the game next year, I think they'd be willing to do that. They can keep creating content. That's the one thing they're uh, they're good for is the content, but. Um, But uh, when it comes to problems, glitchiness, and all that, they're just like any other sports title game. So 
Pretty sad. All right, let's see. This guy's got, oh shit. Super Fractor Brandon Nimmo. Oh shit. Ew. That's disgusting. Uh, 10th, 394, 939, best of luck. Although I'm gonna request the friendly because there's no way I wanna go up against this guy. But he won't accept it. I know he won't. Yeah, didn't think so. Alright. Yep. Got a hold of that one. Arm is definitely a problem. I think that's Marte. That's him right. I'm not I'm not really sure, but that's a big problem if he's uh he's not locating his um his pitches. Oh shit. That one's hit a ways. Go. No! Throw it to the second! Okay. I don't even know what he was thinking there. Like, why would you... Why would you attempt to send your... Why would you attempt to send your guy to third when it was hit to right field? Uh, I'm just having a hard time understanding that logic. Oh, I did not think he would get that. Got it, got it, got it. Of course not. Strike three, sit down. Holy shit, talk about walking at a tightrope walking at danger there. And he's throwing Bob Feller against me. Okay. Come on, Marte. Oh, I was, I thought that was going to be a fastball. Interesting that he went with the 12-6 curve. Come on, dude. Oh, let's see what's going on. What's going on on my phone? Oh, okay. I guess we're back. And this actually just reminded me. I needed to warm up a picture. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna go with Nathan.
Come on, feller. Come on. I... I did not think I was going to do anything with those pitches. There we go, Mickey. Hell yeah. That's right. Just keep setting it up there. I'll get there. I'll get there. No! Oh, God damn it. Alright. Yeah, too bad it was just for not pitcher. But I appreciate the enthusiasm. Still, it does help with uh, Mantle's um, XP. Definitely helps with that. I don't know where he is in terms of XP because I know I was grinding him a lot. Yeah, he smacked that one. I knew Freeman was going to be tough. He hit a sinker. A sinker for a home run. I mean, he got the PCI on it, so, you know, it wasn't exactly like the worst PCI I've ever seen in Unjustified. I knew that Freeman was going to be tough. Ooh, nearly nailed him there. That was dangerous. Nope. Dang, he might have made it. Might have made it. Unfortunately, this is going to put me down two to nothing. Got him. All right, two nothing. Down to nothing, so let's see what we can do. I scored four in my last game. Oh, he's bringing in Iglesias. Had the PCI in the right zone, but just reacted too quickly. Or too... I reacted way too late. Excuse me. Batting six. The second baseman. Good play. Yep. Fielder, uh, pitcher, second field. Apparently, one of them is uh, Raziel Iglesias.
Oh, JD! JD! Get on out of here! Let's go! JD Davis with the home run! Alright. Well, only the one run, but I suppose it's a start. We still got a whole nother half inning to get through. Why is that? Why are they crying? Did their game get postponed again? Ooh, that's close. You hit a bomb? Or you think I hit the bomb? Because I did. It was in the, uh, in the last sitting with J.D. Davis. They just lost on a game-winning field goal. Hey, look, man, those are tough. Those are tough. At least they're competitive. You know, I, I had to watch the Jets' second half. They didn't even... The, the, the only touchdown, they had no offensive points. They had one pick six. That was their entire offense for the um, for the second half against the Miami Dolphins. I mean, this team is sad. I I I, I honestly like I, I don't know why I keep tuning in. The worst thing is that next week they're probably going to pick up a win against Jacksonville. If they don't, uh, honestly, I don't know what's more embarrassing. If they pick up the win against Jacksonville, then they don't get they don't get a higher draft pick. But if they lose to um, if they lose to Jacksonville, considering everything that's happened with Jacksonville, okay, they lost. They fired uh, they fired Urban Meyer, which I say good uh, good riddance. I say good riddance to him. And right now they have an interim coach that's leading them. If the Jets don't beat the Jaguars, like, that is pretty sad. So, they... I, wa I want them to win because it's too embarrassing if they lose to Jacksonville. But at the same time, I understand that that win will likely cost them a top five pick. You're a Steelers fan? Well, at least you've had some Super Bowls. Of course, you're Steelers. I would argue, you know, this is just my opinion, and I may be biased, but I don't think I'm wrong. I think your Steelers team deserve to go to the Super Bowl against the Green Bay Packers. That was 2011, I believe. I did not think Pittsburgh deserved to be there. I thought the Jets deserved it. Because that was by far the best the Jets had been in their two run in their two AFC championship runs. That was their better year, and it was the year that they could have won the Super Bowl because they had played the Packers earlier that season and actually kept the the Packers to nine points. Yeah, they lost that game, but but the Jets, uh, but the Jets did hold the Packers. So I believe that if it had been the Packers and the Jets in that Super Bowl, I think we'd be talking about a much different game. No, David Ortiz. No, all right, GG's to my opponent. Dang, dang Ortiz, dang.
Ah, oh, gosh, it makes me think what could have been with that, with, without that RBI sack fly or that sack fly in the second inning. Could have had a win. Hey, look at that, Mickey Mantle. He's super fractured. About damn time. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, but unfortunately, that it was what it was. Hey, guys. Now that, um... Obviously, uh, but about winning, but we didn't deserve it. Now, I'm sorry. No, I totally agree. I think the Jets should have gone to that Super Bowl. That should it should have been Packers versus Jets. And just think about it. Even from like a historical standpoint, you're talking about two teams. If it had been Packers versus Jets, you're talking about the the two teams that won the first three Super Bowls. In, an, in yet another Super Bowl. Now, may, maybe Aaron Rodgers, I, I think Aaron Rodgers really turned it on during the playoffs that year. So maybe it wouldn't have been the same as what happened in the regular season on Halloween 2010. But I do believe that the Jets would have put, I think, put up more of a fight against the Packers than than the Steelers did. So but like I said, you have the super you have your Super Bowls. You you have those Super Bowls with Ben Roethlisberger. I wish the Jets had a quarterback like Ben Roethlisberger. I really wish we did. There's no doubt in my mind that Ben Roethlisberger I think should be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, you're talking about a guy that I, I think he led the Steelers to their first ever Super Bowl. Yeah, so maybe it would have been a lot different than than the Jets' regular season meeting against the Packers. Oh, I didn't even see this guy's uh, rating. Yeah, I, I think it's time for him to retire. There's really not much left for him to accomplish, so I, I think it's time he did he did retire. So, but the question is, like, who do you go with? Who do you go with if you're the, uh, if you're the Steelers? Like, who would you draft as your QB? Or who would you sign? No, I know. I know. That's why I'm saying I think he should retire. Here's the thing, though. It's like, I can't really name anyone that will that will go to the Steelers, whether it's the draft or free agency, that's going to have the kind of impact that Ben Roethlisberger did. I think I think the Steelers are going to struggle for a, a a while. I mean, maybe they pick up on their. Maybe they do pick up a, a, a good draft pick. Start Mason Rudolph. Mm. Well, that's why I'm saying, like, maybe you look to the draft or you look to free agency and maybe try to get someone better. I'm glad we were able to get off to a hot start here. I don't know, maybe maybe Mason Rudolph can be like a Jimmy Garoppolo or a uh, Patrick Mahomes or, you know, just like 
learn from Ben Roethlisberger, and after he's learned everything, you know, he takes over, and maybe he's good. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're telling me he fucking sucks, so I'm assuming that, you know, that's... Yeah, I know. This is definitely not the year to be drafting QBs. It's kind of like that 2011 feel where you had Sam Bradford and Tim Tebow and Jimmy Clausen. Like, those guys were never going to do well in the NFL. Tebow had his one, one playoff moment. That's about it. Bradford did nothing. He can't even hit a five-yard slant. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you guys are gonna, you guys are gonna struggle for a while in terms of QBs. But maybe that's not the worst thing in the world. If you look at the division that you guys are in right now, I mean, you have guys like Joey Burrow, um, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson. It's a, uh, it's a very tough division. So you know, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world to be tanking at this point. Holy shit! You have got to be kidding me! No way that freaking Sandy Alcantara is going to drive in two additional runs. Oh my god. Oh no, that wasn't Alcantara. That was Polanco. But hey, we got to win! Wait, aren't I at 13? Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I was at 13. Thing's screwing me up. Telling me I have 12 wins. No, I don't have 12. I have 13. Yep. And we still got plenty of time. We could get... There are no good... I think we should draft a no-line. Yeah, I, from what I'm hearing in terms of Met, uh, Jet fans and everything, like our biggest problem right now is defense because we have no D. I mean, you can't tell me, you can't tell me that Bryce Hall is our is our defensive guru because he's not. So I, I think if you're looking defensively, I think this is the draft for it, from what I've been hearing. Yeah. I really wish I could take um, Mantle out of out of center and put him in and put Marte there. But I can't change the lineup once I once I'm here. So. The, de the defense is stout. You just need offensive line. Okay. All right. I mean, you would know better than I would. I don't know anything about the Steelers. You know, you could have told me your your team was was still competitive, and I probably would have bought it. Might have taken a little convincing, but but you would have you would have convinced me eventually. Offense is lacking basically all around except for running back. Okay. Well, then, I guess O-line is a good place to start. Certainly not QB. Take it from a Jets fan. Don't draft a QB in this year's draft. Just play it safe. Go offensive line. Go offense. Do whatever. Just don't, don't take a QB. Not the draft class for it. At least not for, not if you're talking about a high, um, not if you're talking about a high first round pick. If you're talking about that, then I can tell you right now it's not worth it. Maybe later in the rounds, because you never know what's going to happen in those later rounds. You might end up picking up a gem. But I'm just saying like for a high first round pick or an early first round pick, I'm saying no to a QB this year. Not worth it. 
I don't even know who would go number one overall, quite honestly. I just know we need defense, and from what I'm hearing, this uh, this draft class is the defensive draft class. Oh, how do you hit that? Can he pick it from pit? Okay. Hey, you're, you, I'll take your word for it because clearly I know nothing. I know nothing about college football. You know, I. This might be me, but I would love to see. Um, uh, I I don't know if you watch much college football this year. But I would love to see the wide receiver from Penn State go go drafted high. Uh, he was number five. I think he's a senior. Uh, but he was like one of he was a very he was a top target for Penn State this year for Steve Clifford and all those guys. You watch college sports, okay? So maybe you know the guy then. Uh, number five with Penn State, he was a wide receiver. I've kind of forgotten his name because I'm still waiting on, uh, I'm still waiting for Penn State to play the Outback Bowl, I guess is what it, what they're in now. They're going up against Arkansas from what I, from what I read. Let's go. Keeping him off the board. Come on, Marte. No, what the frick did I do? God damn it. Look at that average for Jimmy Rollins. That is amazing. And of course I swing at a, at a fastball that is outside. Yeah, Jahan Dotson. Dachson, I think his name is. Yeah, Jahan Dachson. I think I, uh, from what I saw from Penn State this year, I think that guy can easily be a, a, a draft pick. But, I mean, personally, I would take him in the first round, but I think, I think his teams are, I, I think, I think he might be more second to four, uh, fourth round kind of pick. Again, maybe I'm biased because I'm a, Penn State fan, but he really was good this year. He really was. It's just, it's... Here's the thing. Penn State, James Franklin, I do not understand why they gave him an extension. After, after multiple years of where Penn State could have been in position to get into the college football playoffs, James Franklin absolutely craps the bread, uh, craps the bed, and they fall. I mean, they were in contention when Saquon Barkley was at Penn State. But they couldn't beat Ohio State. I mean, my God! If, if Penn State could have beat Auburn, why couldn't why couldn't they beat Iowa? Why couldn't they beat Ohio State? And at that point, it was just downhill. 
Once they lost to Iowa, it was downhill from there. Once they lost to Iowa, that was it. They were they were just on that slippery slope. But my God, this should have been this should have been the year that Penn State was in the college football playoffs, and they didn't get there. And James Franklin. Yeah, I know. That's why, it, it, look, I like what James Franklin really has done with the program. If you consider where they were at one point, like, after after Bill O'Brien left to go coach to Texas, which obviously that's worked out for him, but after after Bill O'Brien left, they thought they thought Penn State might drop off a bit and James Franklin kept them in. I mean, think about all those upsets that Penn State had against Ohio State and Michigan. All those years that Franklin was head coach. So he was great for taking Penn State back into the into the top 25 rankings. He was good for that. But now he's not he's clearly not a coach that can get Penn State to the college football playoffs. He's just not. And and this year was probably the best example of it. I thought 2017 or whatever was a good example. Yeah, exactly. You Exactly. When it comes time for Penn State to show up, they don't come through. Oh, my God. That loss to Illinois, oh my god. First of all, college football needs to get rid of their of their overtime rules, because that is such bullshit. That really is. I don't care how exciting it is. This, this, this is that's bullshit. That's bullshit that you you win based on uh, on like a, uh, on those attempts. I, I do not like the overtime rules for college football. I think they suck. The first baseman, but there's no reason that Penn State should have lost should have lost um, to Illinois. They shouldn't have. Illinois celebrated like they won the freaking national championship, and they have every right to do that. They have every right. But that was so fucking stupid. I mean, if it wasn't clear at that point that Penn... If it wasn't clear up till that point that Penn State was not going to be a national championship contender, that loss against Illinois was just a nail in the coffin. After that, I was like, there's no way they're beating Ohio State. There's no way they're beating Michigan State. There's no way. I just... Ugh, God, it makes me so annoyed. That that's, that's what they do. And they beat Wisconsin week one! They beat Wisconsin week one, and then they beat Auburn! So how the hell could they not beat Iowa, and how the hell could they not beat Ohio State? All right, pitcher. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it, man. You have a good night. Seriously, it's like Cincinnati definitely deserves to be in it. Uh, uh, Georgia and freaking Alabama. I don't know about Georgia, especially after that loss they took in the SEC championship, but. I, I think it's Michigan that's in uh, that's in the college football playoffs. So I think it's Alabama, Georgia, or no, Alabama, Cincinnati, Georgia, Michigan. I believe are the four. Yeah, exactly. You think Georgia's winning? I don't know. Uh, that that loss against 
uh, against Alabama, I think definitely hurt their chances. I think Alabama is definitely going to be in the national championship game. Uh, so that probably knocks out Michigan. So, and then Cincinnati versus Georgia. Well, yeah, but again, that whole, how much did that impact, did that SEC championship loss impact Georgia? That's, that's what I'd be concerned about. Yeah, believe me, dude, I watched the first game between, um, uh, or the first game of the season for Georgia against Clemson, and they, uh, that defense was solid. It's just that when push comes to shove, in the SEC championship, it was Alabama standing tall. I mean, I'm sorry, that's just, that's like having Vince Lombardi as your coach in the NFL. You know, everyone's going to not be happy about it except Alabama fans. And they're not going to fire Nick Saban anytime soon. So Nick Saban is going to die in his office. He's going to die in his coaching office. And they're going to bury him somewhere on the football field. I'm sure of it. Okay. Hey, man. It's... I mean, teams can perform differently when... Um, in different situations. So we'll see what happens. I just, I have some questions about Georgia following their SEC championship loss. That's all. All right, GG to my opponent. He kept me hitless. Yeah, this dude was cracked. <laughs> I, I much imagine that's in his will. All right, so we're on to our to the next run. Saberhagen really impressed me, so I'm going to put him back in. Um, Alcantara was not bad, so I think I'll put I'll keep him back in. Um, Cliffley. Uh, who else did I have? Gibson. He could be in for Feller, and then. Let's get Pedro instead of Kerry Wood. And yeah, I mean he stuck. He absolutely sucked in the NFL, but you know, freaking college-wise, that dude's Bear Bryant. I mean. Like, that's actually a comparison that we can have now. Who is the better who is the better coach at at Alabama? Is it is it Nick Saban or is it Bear Bryant? I think that's a legitimate conversation we can have. Jorge Blanco at second. Troy Gloss at third, Jimmy Rollins at short, JD in left, Cattell, now that we have um, Nick Saban, okay, that's interesting, that's an interesting pick, he's definitely the greatest coach that I've ever, that I've ever witnessed. I think I'm going to give Vlad Jr. or Vlad uh, Guerrero here a shot. I don't even know if I've given him. Oh, yeah, he sucked for me. 
Well, Ruth hasn't performed any better, has he? No. Actually, we'll give Ruth a shot. And then we'll put Cattell there. Jimmy Rollins there. Ortiz there. Piazza can move up a little. All right, let's do it. Try to pick up a couple more wins. We're at 13. But now, see, now I think Steven just, yeah, definitely. I think he's definitely led, he, he's had a real impact on it. Um, I'm just saying, like, historically speaking, I mean, Bear Bryant, I, I, Bear Bryant laid the foundation for Alabama. Steven just built it, uh, built upon it. New York Skeeters, huh? All right, well, that's the buck. 87 and 33. Holy shit, this guy's cracked. You know, I I, I just think that with without guys like like Bear Bryant, you know, do we have do we have uh, guys like Nick Saban? Maybe for LSU, maybe, but you know, Nick Saban, Alabama wise, I don't know if that happens. Without Bear Bryant. Strike three, sit down. Get there, Ruth. Move your short, stubby little legs. I mean, personally, my favorite football coach of all time, a little controversial, especially in the later part of his career, but Joe Paterno, no doubt one of the great, uh, one of uh, a top, a top ten college football coach in my opinion. Only thing that keeps them out of top five is Urban Meyer, Nick Saban, Bear Bryant. Um, I guess should we throw Clemson's coach in there when he when he and Trevor Lawrence were leading them to national championships and everything? I think that's fair. Newt Rockney, can't forget about Newt Rock and Newt Rockney, can't forget about him. But I definitely put Joe Paterno in the top ten of greatest college football coaches of all time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, college uh, college students. I can tell you personally because I. I literally just got out of college like three years ago. We are immature. We uh, as a college students are immature as fuck. Why? Because they they think they own the world, or the, uh, they're gonna own the world. And it's like, no, reality is gonna set in for you. I mean, they're doing stupid stuff like having parties and not really taking their studies seriously. Look at the student debt that we piled up. My generation has piled up a shit ton of student debt. It's sad. 
And for what reason? Just because we wanted to go to colleges like Penn State or Alabama that may have not been in our price range? We're stupid as hell. We are stupid as hell. Yeah. Again, I think there are so many names that are that are above Joe Paterno, but considering he is, I, I mean, depends on how you feel. Some people feel that he shouldn't have been awarded wins with the whole Jerry Sandusky thing, but my view on that is like, who the hell cares? I mean, yes, it's very, it's very sad what happened to those boys and what Jerry Sandusky did. But that shouldn't impact what what Joe Paterno was able to do as a coach. Still has twenty thousand. Holy shit! Well, at least it's twenty k. I I can tell you personally, I probably had sixty k. Now, and I've cut that. No, actually, I probably had like eighty k, and I've cut that down in half. Over over. Three years. Soon going on four. And actually, I'm going to get most of my soon. Oh, the biggest loans that I was worried about are going to be paid off next year. And then all I just have to worry about are like my federal lo student loans. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. Which, unfortunately, is still a lot. But at least I didn't accrue interest interest when um during the pandemic so that was a good thing yeah well see that's honestly my fault d lovey that's my fault because i went to uh Hofstra university which is a private university out on long island of course that's going to put me thousands of dollars in debt that's why i don't even have my own apartment right now but my Hope is that next year I can have my own apartment. Yeah, it's a shit ton of money and that's that's my fault. I literally could have gone to a university that's like 10 minutes away from where I live. And I had a $20,000 scholarship to that university. So basically, so I wouldn't have had to pay for room and board I wouldn't have had to pay for a meal plan because I would have been living from home, so I could have just eaten whatever from from home, and I could have saved myself a meal plan. All told, I could have saved myself. I, I could have only paid five thousand dollars. Dana Holgerson, who is now phenomenal for himself at Houston, um, was he in? Was he at West Virginia when? Uh, when Geno Smith was there, because I'd like to have a little chat about it, a, a little chat with him about quarterbacks. You know what's funny? Um, so my friends and I, we did like an online dynasty for uh, for NCAA football thirteen, and I went with the uh, Texas Longhorns. Mainly because they, uh, I had a shirt that was for Texas, and also I didn't want to be in the Big Ten because I knew I was going to get smoked by a couple, couple of my friends. So I just wanted to avoid that conference in general. Yes, he coached Geno Smith and Tavon Austin. Okay, Tavon Austin, I don't care as much about, but Geno Smith, I definitely care. As a Jets fan, I'm not happy about that. But then again, we. Couldn't we didn't have to pick him? But West Virginia, like, I mean, what happened to him? It seemed like they fell off the face of the earth. Because I don't even hear anyone talking about the Mountaineers anymore. It's almost like they're non-existent. Your attention, please. 
Oh, Christ. Not Lee Smith. The good days of your program, yeah. Well, anyway, let me tell you my story. So, um, so I went with the Texas Longhorns, but another friend of mine went with the West Virginia Mountaineers. So obviously we were going to play each other. And we did because it was that season that they actually had an early, I think it was like a week four matchup, Texas and West Virginia. So we're playing and I'm beating him. Um, it was, it, this was late at night. We're talking about like one or two o'clock in the morning. And at that point, I'm tired. We just got into the fourth quarter, five minutes to go. I had a 17-point lead over him. And I said to him, listen, dude, I, I'm really tired. And I just want to get this game over with. So I'm just going to run out the clock. And, you know, we can just end this game. And he's like, if you do that, then I'll make sure you don't win this game. So... I so I ran the ball once. I ran the ball once, and the next play he decided to jump offside. So okay, you know, move up five yards. Jumps offside again. He's doing this until we get to the one yard line. The only problem is that after the one yard line, you can't go anywhere. You're basically stuck there. It's kind of like a freeze off. Um. With, in MLB the sh in MLB the show, so he just kept jumping offside. I couldn't hike the ball. He probably extended that game by at least an hour, maybe two. Oh my God! When I tell you, I was so pissed at him after that. I literally was ready to go to football, uh, go to the football practice the very next day and just beat the fucking shit out of him for being such a shithead. And all I wanted to do was to go get some sleep. And yet this asshole decides he's going to be the ultimate troll and basically keep me on playing for an hour, an hour and a half, maybe two hours. So every time I think of West Virginia, you know, not to think of it so poorly, but my friend unfortunately gave me that gave me that bad memory and so every time I hear West Virginia I think of that no believe me man it wasn't just me that was mad either it wasn't just me we were the last ones to play our dynasty so we could have had this game done and we could have advanced the season and we would have been able to move on so it wasn't just me that he pissed off he pissed off a lot of our uh, a lot of our our friends as well. Ah, I see. I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. Oh God, he's throwing Tom Seaver against me. Actually, I want to see this guy's record. He is 34 and 1. Holy shit, this guy's cracked. Why am I getting all the ranked seasons players that are like insanely good? 34 and 1? Holy shit, the guy never loses. Yeah, but isn't the Big 12 now losing Texas and Oklahoma to the to the um to the SEC, which by the way, I think is such a shitty move. They easily could have gone elsewhere, but they wanted, they wanted uh, to go to SEC because of the money. Next year we may be decent. Okay. Well, here's hoping for the best for you guys. Because right now, Oklahoma and Texas are not going to give a shit about the Big 12. Especially since they're moving. But I did hear 
that um, the Big Ten, the ACC, and the Pac-12 were going to band together. I don't know if they were going to, like, share conferences or if they were going to, like, try to play more games against each other. But um, what I heard was that the Big Ten, ACC, and the Pac-12 were all discussing about become a, like, combining their their power or their 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 influence as conferences to um to overtake the SEC which i think that would be cool to finally have them not uh, to finally have some uh, some conference great other than the SEC recently had a four star QB commit who could start as freshman but i doubt he will because our team hmm I'm sorry. Hey, look, man, it's, you know, college football is weird. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it either. I just heard there were discussions. A super conference. Yeah, to overtake the SEC. But, I mean, I, I don't... See, here's the thing. I look at the Big Ten, the... Pac-12 and the uh, and the ACC and I I don't know I don't know if that's enough to overtake the SEC. be definitely interesting to see that's for sure one thing I am disappointed though is that next year we're not getting the uh, NCAA football game the Big 12 is also adding Cincinnati Houston BYU oh uh, you for the loss of Oklahoma and Texas okay I mean yeah Cincinnati and Houston that could still make the conference relevant. It's just, I, I don't know. SEC definitely got a lot more firepower with Oklahoma and Texas. And you had to figure that those programs were going to go to the same conference. Because otherwise, how are you going to do the Red River rivalry? You know, it's kind of like... If Ohio and Michigan, or Ohio State and Michigan just decided that they didn't want to do the, um, they didn't want to do the, oh, shit. Well, I fucked up. I fucked up pretty badly. Yeah, 2023, it's not going to be next year, it'll be the year after, is what EA Sports was saying. The thing is, I think Notre Dame is still holding out because they don't want to pay players, or they don't want their they don't want their uh, their players' likeness to be used in the game, and uh, and that includes using their logos and everything. And it's like, how can you include a college football game without Notre Dame? You just can't. That's why that's why it makes it tough. And such a shame too. But I am definitely excited for whenever it drops. I mean, that game is going to have so much hype. I can't wait to play as Penn State and try to lead them to a national championship and everything. So damn excited for it. Let's go. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's right. Because now that they settled the whole lawsuit thing, now they have to, and now they can use real players. I, I, I really do hope that EA Sports includes uh, Ultimate Team, just like they did in NCAA Football 14. Their game is one of the most historically bright college... Yeah, that's, a, that's why I'm saying, like, if 
if Notre Dame keeps holding out for um, in, in the football game, I don't, or, or keeps holding out of the football game, I don't see how they make the game. I mean, they can still do it, but people are going to want to play with Notre Dame. And if they can't play with Notre Dame... <laughs> Alright, sounds good, man. I mean, good luck with Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, if they eventually become in the game. Penn State, Michigan, um, Oregon, Florida, Georgia... I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be grinding out their 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 national champions too. So there's going to be a lot. How has this guy not scored a single run against me at this point? Like I I I I am confused. But yeah, I I do want to see the ultimate team. And if they have to, uh, if they could do it with the college football players, that'd be great. If not, I love what they did in um, in uh, fourteen. Nico Mar uh, Marquiol, I'm assuming that's the coach for the for the Mountaineers. Oh, at a boy, Piazza. Batting seven, the second baseman, Jorge Polanco. Get out, get out. Come on, get out of here, get out of here. Fuck! Warning track power. Third baseman. Ah, Troy Gloss, you disappoint. Oh, he's the four-star QB. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, if you're excited about it, I mean, good for you, man. I don't even know who's gonna. I know Clifford is leaving Penn State, so because I, I believe he's a senior or he's a graduate, so. He's going to be, he's probably going to be gone. Um, you know, Doxson, I, I, I'm worried about him. You know, who's going to replace him? Basketball is what's keeping West Virginia relevant. Okay. Well, that's a good thing, right? At least you guys are... Still there. See, it, it's so weird for me as a as a college sports fan because when it comes to the big three of sports, so we're talking college football, basketball, and baseball, um, I have three different favorite teams. Normally have a least decent basketball team. Ah, I see. I see, I see, I see. Ah, uh, I'm... S do you love me? Do you think we can take a rain check on that? Because I'm actually going to end stream after this game. I'm sorry. I should have. I was going to say something, but um, I, I, I wasn't like sure how this game would turn out. So do you think we can take it for tomorrow? Can we do uh, I can add you on PSN tonight, but tomorrow do you think we can play? I hate doing that. I really do, but... I, I just, I normally stop at 9, and right now it's it's like 4 minutes to 9 for me. Alright, thanks, I appreciate it. I, I promise you I won't forget. We'll definitely play our game tomorrow. 
stay fat of uh, go foul. Thank you. I don't know why I was calling for that baseball to stay fair. I didn't want it to stay fair. Thank you. I I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Your attention, please. Now, Eric Gagne. Okay. Oh no! I didn't I didn't put in Danny Santana. Ah, oh, fuck me. Oh, he not even letting me. Oh, too bad, asshole. Ooh, look at that record for Joe Nathan. Holy shit. How do I strike out? Um, how do I strike out against Gagne? Fuck me. Because I put myself in a bad position like that. Alright, man, you go, you go eat. Yeah. After this, I gotta go eat myself. I, I need to get something to eat. Oh my god, he pitches so slow. That's why I need to stay, uh, stay back. Unless Jimmy Rollins hits a home run here. I, I think we're going to extras. Oh, you're back. Well, that was a quick eat. What, did you have, like, a chip or something? I didn't have a choice there. I was already committed. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why I keep putting keep putting uh, Gagne in. Wow, he's gonna leave Joe. He's gonna leave Gagne in on third. Wow. All I can say is wow on that. Wow, just wow. Up. Oh no, he's gonna score! This JD is slow as shit! He's gonna score twice, actually. I hope you have an arm. No, you don't. Now battle. The shortstop. Fernando Tatis Jr. Joe Nathan is a very terrible pitcher. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with him because I don't have anyone else warmed up. Oh, there you go. There you go. Very nice. There you go. See, you guys got a championship. You know what was cool, dude? I was um, down in Daytona uh, for in, in, fact, in, in like late August, early September, something like that. And um, my dad and I, we were coming back. We were at the Orlando airport, uh, ready to fly home and everything. And we happened to run into the Penn State women's volleyball team while we were waiting at our terminal. So I was just talking to them for a little bit, not, I, not hitting on them because we're talking about girls who are still in college. I'm in my mid twenties, so sorry. I put the I pumped the brakes on uh, if you're still in college, but that's besides the point. I was talking to them, 
And, you know, it was cool just talking to them. You know, Penn State Volleyball is, like, one of the, t is the top. One of the top, if not the top, program in the nation in terms of women's volleyball. So, it was very cool to just give them a little we are Penn State chance, uh, a chant. Um, I'm pretty sure they were, they wanted to just go home or go back to campus and everything, but it was really cool to run into them. I mean, we got three wins, so. Who was that? The back, the left field, JD Martinez. Atta boy, JD. At least we got a run. Now, if Piazza just wants to hit one over the wall and really, and really make this interesting, I would not be opposed to that. Pat White? Huh. I've never heard of him. Again, I really don't follow um, college football all that much, let alone West Virginia University uh, college football, but... That's cool, man. Pat White? Cool. Yep, that's it for my run here. Uh, let's see. Is anyone close? David Ortiz, he's growing up there, I guess. Piazza struggling along. Joe Nathan, like, I don't even know why I have him at this point. So, <laughs> all right. Um, well, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. So, he's one of the best dual threat QBs in college football history, probably. So, better than um, Michael Vick and those guys? Because that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty bold claim, you know? And especially if you think nowadays that's what – that's basically the college football landscape, the dual-threat quarterback, the guy who can go on the run, but he can also throw it. I mean, Ohio State was famous for it. Guys like Braxton Miller were just, like, insane. But is he, like, the – originator like the original dual threat quarterback or was he just around the same time that Michael Vick was doing it and decided he was going to do it too not better than them but probably in his college days very close to their level Okay. Hey, that's still a pretty good comparison. You know, if you could say that you were you were nearly as good as Michael Vick or Braxton Miller or those guys, I mean, that's 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 pretty good. That's a pretty good comparison. I don't think he would be mad at all at that. But I unfortunately I have to end the conversation there. I I got to go eat. So Thank you to everyone who stuck around for part two of this stream. Obviously, on YouTube, this is going to be the only part that you guys see because nothing interesting happened in the first part. So, 
technically part two of this stream on Twitch is really what's going up on YouTube. He went to the NFL and got knocked out and never played pro football again. Oh, shit. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, anyway, so, um, yeah, this, this part will be up on YouTube. Uh, this first part, obviously not. All right, D-Lobby, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate it. And I look forward to our game tomorrow. I promise you that will happen. So I look forward to seeing it, and maybe we can get it in first uh, for uh, when I first pop on. So I'll see you later, man. Thanks for hanging out. Um, but, uh, you know, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow me here on Twitch and or subscribe. Either one would make me a very happy person. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope that you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That way you know when I post my videos. And if you want to know when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter at JeffreyWarner3. The link is in the about page that's underneath my stream here. So go, give, uh, so go check me out. I'll always tweet whenever I go live. Thank you, D-Lobby. I appreciate it. Yeah, my gamer tag's up in the top left corner there, so you can just add that, and I'll get to it later. Um, and, uh, you, can also, you can also turn on notifications here on Twitch. That way Twitch sends you an email every time I start up a stream. Overall, um, like I said, if I could get even three wins, three to four wins in the event on stream, that would be fantastic. So that's what we got today. We got three wins. Means we're three wins closer to Trey Turner. So tomorrow we'll continue on the grind. D. Lovey and I have a matchup that we need to play. Uh, so I hope you'll check us out tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. And until then, guys, have a great night.